this is only the beginning. Indiana and Tennessee among the first states today where healthcare workers got the brand new H1N1 or swine flu vaccine in the form of a nose tickling nasal mist. This is a great day in the fight against flu. It's a chance to turn the tide on this epidemic. Shots are on the way too. 42 states have asked for some of the 250 million doses the government ordered. It's clear what public health experts want to happen, a sweeping vaccination effort. First, the most vulnerable, health care workers, pregnant women, people with chronic conditions, then everyone else, especially children. In an ideal world, would you give the shot to every child you see here above six months age? Yes, I think in the ideal world, the more children that we immunize, the greater herd immunity we get, the more children we protect, the less influenza we're going to see once the season begins. And so, yes, I would. Dr. Andrew Racine heads up pediatrics at the Children's Hospital of Montefiore in New York with almost 25,000 little patients. At this point, our feeling is that we're in a little bit of a race between the arrival of the virus and the arrival of the vaccine. And so the question really is, are we going to get the vaccine in time to immunize sufficient numbers of children before the virus arrives? We don't know. Dr. Richard Besser is a pediatrician, a father of two, former acting head of the Centers for Disease Control, and now AB. ABC News senior oh, health and no, medical editor. The overwhelming feeling of the medical community is that, thank goodness, the vaccine is now here. Lollipop. But there are outliers, doctors Hi. telling parents to hold off. And here's the thing, ask any parent, they trust their pediatricians. So your patients were happy to hear you voicing, well, wait a minute, maybe we don't all need to get this vaccine. Correct. And you're still nursing and stuff? Yeah. Dr. Michelle Cohen sent an email to the parents of his 15,000 patients in New York saying he was on the fence about the swine flu vaccine and there was no reason for an orange alert. The flu is mild. The flu vaccine is a less than perfect um, vaccine. And yet, and finally, this is a new vaccine which is probably going to be safe, but, but. It's that kind of minority opinion that's fueling debates on websites and at the playground. We went looking for concerns and questions so we could have Dr. Besser clear things up. A lot of moms told us they thought the whole H1N1 outbreak was media hype. The flu just isn't that bad. If the strain that's going around is not really so dangerous, why should we be vaccinated? It's important people have an, a healthy respect for this virus and this, and, and this illness. Most people have mild disease, but we hear these heartbreaking stories of people who have gotten this infection and have died. But are there side effects of the vaccine? It makes me a little nervous that it hasn't been around that long, and I'm, but I think the chances of getting vaccinated and the side effects from that outweigh getting the actual swine flu. This vaccine went through the same safety testing, the same process that's used every year. For same length of testing? The same length of testing. Every year, 100 million people get the flu vaccine, and it has a very good safety track record. Several moms asked if the vaccine itself would make their child sick. I would wonder if I were to give her the swine flu vaccine, if there would be any adverse consequences in terms of could she possibly develop any, develop any symptoms. A couple things could happen. One is it, it, it takes uh, a couple weeks in general for a flu vaccine to protect you. So you could get the flu in between. But many people when they get a flu shot will have some soreness, some redness, uh, may have a little bit of fever. Uh, that's not the flu. That's a, you know, a reaction to the, to, the, to the shot. And those are very different things. One, two, three. Okay, so it's out today, but is there any harm in just waiting? We're going to wait a little while, maybe a month or two, see how it plays out with everyone and, you know, maybe they'll have some more research, who knows. I think that, that people need to have their questions answered. Uh, the question in terms of when am I most at risk for swine flu, the answer is now. Mm -hmm. It's unclear if people who've already had swine flu are already immune to it. Dr. Besser suggests they get the vaccine just to be safe. And yes, he advises everyone to have both a seasonal flu shot and an H1N1 flu shot, especially if you're in a high-risk group. Which leads to one final point. If everyone took the right. stance that you are taking, if every doctor in America right. started saying, well, maybe we don't need you to get this vaccine, then couldn't there be an even larger epidemic? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, if everyone... Um, 
but this is not going to happen. I was talking to uh, a woman at, at my son's soccer game the other day, and, and she said, well, I don't vaccinate my children. And what, what's clear to me is that in this country, we're fortunate that we don't see the diseases that are frequently protected by vaccine. But if everyone took the position of, I'm not going to vaccinate my, my child, we would see these diseases return. If we vaccinate our children, if we get vaccinated ourselves, we're doing a lot to protect ourselves, our families, and those around us. You have two boys. I have two boys, 11 and 14, and when the swine flu vaccine is available in our community, they're going to get in line and get theirs. Absolutely sure. Absolutely sure. I'm Kate Snow for Nightline in New York.